grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray our prayer for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that pursuing what you have promised, we may share your heavenly glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Our scripture reads, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Just so, I tell you. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I have lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, and I bring you his love. As we, who are sinful, read this lesson, we often identify ourselves with those that Jesus befriended and spurn those persons who look down upon our Lord, just as their legalisms and Pharisaic guideposts dictated to them. However, as disciples, we need to remember that the danger always exists that we might perform the same sort of erroneous judgments. For example, recently my wife and I went to a supermarket to buy some dog food and a few boxes of bottled water. During that foray, once in the store, my wife noticed how crowded it was. More so among them were those dressed in rather impoverished fashion. One quite obese woman sat in a motorized chair and loudly complained concerning the quality of the steak she had in her hand. Another, in the long line leading to the cashier, complained about the waning freezing temperatures of her blended vegetables. Arriving at last to the cashier, we inquired as to the crowd, and the boisterous manner not usually encountered. The cashier said, It's welfare day. People got their food stamps just yesterday. Most are buying prime cut meats, soda, and the choices of frozen goods. After arriving back to our car, we thought about how gross it was that we, by happenstance, should be there in that store on that day with those people. And hearing this lesson for today, however, and hearing it in our hearts since the occasion, we thought about again about that event. As usual, God, through Scripture, has given us greater insights. After hearing Jesus' words with recollections as a couple, we now remember an elderly man in that store as he helped a young mother get a box of baby formula that was placed on a very, very high shelf. We also re recall community conversations that were held between persons who had been laid off work for so long 
that they've given up looking for employment, knowing that their jobs are now done overseas. For them, their acceptance of welfare is a rank recognition that things will not ever change, or at least so they think. But things have changed, you see, and are changing even yet. You see, amid those persons, both rowdy and mild, like some of the sausages they sought, our Lord exists doing yet his acts of kindness and healing. As the Christian church, we need to remember the divine love of God that sought out the lowly and the destitute through Christ. He came to befriend especially those who were without worldly hope and could not or would not press any claim to righteousness. He came especially to save those who, of us who are lost, abandoned, and misguided. Indeed, Jesus came to forgive us, to save us, and guide us. And His Spirit remains with us still. On this wonderful day after Pentecost, we thus say, Thanks be to God. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.